So first, Meir Maor, the chief uh, architect of uh, Spark Beyond. Second, okay. Gad Benram, uh, is applied ML expert working at Do It uh, International. Oren Steinberg is the head of AI and ML specialist in North and South EMEA at AWS. So thank you all for joining us. The speakers, can you see us all? Yes. Okay. Um, so we can start right now. Um, so basically the panel is going to speak about many elements of AutoML. If we are ready to use that, what are the barriers and obstacles? So um, this is going to be our main discussions. You can ask some questions in the chat if you have. I'm not sure that we have time to address them, but I believe we might have. So if you have any questions while we speak and you want to address a question to someone, just question in general, feel, fr feel free to do that. Okay, so uh, let's start. Um, the first questions for starters, um, how would you define AutoML? And this is like a broad question because as we saw today, many companies use it in different technologies, different ways. So we'll be happy to just hear your thought about that. And uh, Gad, would you like to start? Yeah. Um, so I think that it's an interesting question because our audience here is mostly, I would say, people that do ML, right? People that are maybe are machine learning engineers or researchers. And I find that when I talk to these type of people, um, their definition of AutoML is mostly automate my work, right? Help me find the optimal model. Help me find the optimal hyperparameter set. Um, maybe help me do the training. Um, but when I look at the broader uh, community on people that outside the machine learning community, but still within the industry, uh, maybe uh, product owners, product managers, maybe C-level, uh, when they think of AutoML, they actually think of providing me with a product that actually solves the solution end to end. Um, give me something that does product recommendation. Give me something that does churn prediction. Uh, and I think that there is also, we kind of tend to forget, but there is also a wide broad of, uh, a broad set of, uh, of services that you can find uh, that actually do that and automate machine learning to another level. So I would say the basic of machine learning is uh, of AutoML is automate the process of, of a machine learning engineer, but also you can include in the definition of AutoML um, ways to, for example, uh, do automatic churn prediction. Uh, and we do start to see these products coming out. And uh, I think that that will be the next generation. Of Hey, thank you. Uh, May, would you like to share your thought? Uh, so so I, 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 I totally agree. Uh, we have AutoML being everything. And we see that nowadays, sort of, it's status quo that everybody does hyperparameter optimization and uh, modeling, and we don't do that ourselves. And it's becoming gradually that you need automated tools for more stuff, for cleaning, for imputation, for feature engineering, that's sort of gradual. And then we, we, where we're still heading is we're, we're heading towards solving more of the problem. Can I set up the problem? How do I translate the business problem into a data problem? How do I identify the issues, uh, leaks, uh, sampling problems, etc.? How do I find insights? Uh, a lot of times we're focusing on problems where the goal is accuracy and time because we know how to measure them. But what if the goal is insight, understandability, uh, something else? That's, that's still out there. But in my opinion, this is all auto ML. This is all something that we're trying to solve and we're working on. Uh, so auto ML is everything, everything you'd think a data scientist, machine learning engineers can do. And the interesting part of AutoML is the part which has not been automated yet. Because no, nobody considers gradient descent AutoML because that's been automated long time ago. That's actually fitting the model. Uh, interesting, actually very interesting uh, perspective. 
Um, yeah, automatic is uh, a point of time, as you said. This is, depends on where we are now dealing with the development. And Owen, what do you think about that from your perspective? Yeah, so um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, fantastic. Thanks. So I think uh, I like the approaches that some of our earlier speakers took about looking at the stages of the ML journey, right? We're starting with, of course, like uh, uh, Mayor just mentioned, the problem definition. But once we get that in place, data, data cleaning, data preparation, experimentation, evaluation, deployment, monitoring, and so on. For each of these steps, I would look, if you just imagine like six or whatever steps that you have there, each of them has two elements. One is the DevOps, MLOps piece to it, and the other is the science element. So in this uh, um, table of two by six, AutoML is automating either one or more of these functions. So if you think about, it, you can automate just the training, you can automate just the model monitoring, the science aspect to it, or both ML and the science aspect of it. But you can also automate the entire thing, right? The entire block of end-to-end, -end, which is kind of what the guys here alluded to. If you have a very specific use case, whether it's personalization, whether it's churn prediction, or something that is more um, fine, grant, finely uh, defined then you can automate the entire process. And this is where we're seeing more and more services like God mentioned coming out there and being able to automate more. And this is where we're approaching also the um, citizen data scientists or the analysts as it was referred to earlier today. Uh, fantastic. I really like your approach and how you mentioned that it really depends on what we have now and things that we would like to automate. Um, I think it's a, a great way to just move to our questions. So. What is the current state of AutoML? How far has the field advanced? Is this technology ready to be widespread? Uh, and so that many other companies will use it? Because this is something that we have heard a lot uh, in the upcoming weeks that we had before the, the conference that some of the people think that it's ready, but it's not mature yet. Some of think that, you know, this is, could be as an experiment tool, but this is not something that you can take throughout the entire way to production. So be Happy to hear your thoughts and just see what do you think about that. Uh, God, you have a lot of experience in there. I will be happy to hear your thought. Um, so I have to say that sometimes I find hard to understand why it's not uh, more adopted or widely adopted. And the reason is because I do see success stories. I do see companies that give out on uh, handcrafting models and writing TensorFlow code and, and importing scikit-learn or, or whatever library that they like to work with. Um, and they move towards these AutoML services. You know, I remember uh, way, in, in, way back a few years ago that um, my uh, commander in the military used to win Kaggle competitions using H2O uh, that used to do this hyperparameter tuning, which was the state of the art AutoML a few years ago. Um, I think that some of the reason why companies are, so, so yes, they are, there is AutoML, there, is, there are this wonderful product like SageMaker Autopilot and uh, Google AutoML tables that just, you know, you drop your data on, on that. It does the most naive, uh, feature extraction that you would anyway do, like breaking down the uh, timestamp to to the uh, you know standard uh, transformations, and maybe do uh, feature uh, feature correlations and and create these uh, the set of features behind and do maybe text uh, breakdown, and then create a model for you and train the model for you and then host the model for you and then even provide you with a container that you can host either on your platform on the, or on the cloud platform. So there are these products. I see these companies that are starting to leverage it. I see these in production already. Um, I'm still not sure what is the uh, barrier that prevents companies from fully adopting uh, AutoML uh, services. Besides those who, are, who cannot find their, uh, you know, their needs answered in, machine, in, in AutoML, uh, that may be, you know, there are not enough services that do um, AutoML for reinforcement learning. There is not enough services that do it if you want to tra change your, uh, your maybe loss function, if you need to have 
some kind of a special architecture that solves something very, very specific, then I understand why they wouldn't go for that. But I'm talking about these companies that are unable to do machine learning when there is this very, very simple solution given to them. And, and I think that um, there is still a need for machine learning experts to be able to operate machine learning uh, auto ML services uh, that is currently missing in a lot of companies. So if I try to guess what is the reason why companies are not using auto ML when they can, then my answer would be that they are missing the machine learning experts that would let off from trying to develop their own models and try these um, this model that can do you know, magic for them. Okay, interesting. So you say it's more than human and technical. It's interesting approach. Uh, May, what do you think about that? Wow, this is ready to be used, not ready to be used. So, so obviously, uh, being from Spark Beyond who sell a platform which among others does AutoML, I think it's ready to be used. As God said, there are plenty of success stories. I'll try to outline a bit where we see the successes. So, so I think uh, tools uh, like like uh, Spark Brand Discovery Platform are very effective in taking a project of several months down to days. So, so that scale. Sometimes you have Uber challenges, huge problems, like companies would say, I have this one problem. My problem is fraud detection and I have a hundred analysts working on it. My problem is recommendation. I have a hundred data science working on it. So I don't know, I won't just solve that problem. But when you have these problems, you see you often break them down into many sub problems. And each of those problems is solvable by auto ML and is solvable. And it will do many of the tasks that you do many of the, uh, the features not only the naive features that uh, God described, but, but what we're, we're getting better to do a, a step beyond naive features. We will uh, break down the text. You will use the toolbox. You will add external data. M the big aha moment I saw was when I read a winning Kegel interview, I see the same bag of tricks. You see the same bag of tricks being used over and over again. So when you understand that if you model the problem correctly, the space, well, it's large, but it's not insurmountable. And, 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 and the AutoML tools are, 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 are there, are working. You see people doing them. Uh, it's not all the way automated. Um, having an endpoint serving your model uh, is not... Uh, doesn't mean it's used in production. Uh, the early part of the problem is not. Some non-data scientists, which is a big challenge, we're trying to bring to lower the area, aren't quite there yet. But it's totally there and bringing value to, to all sorts of companies from the more advanced analysts to the most senior data scientists and researchers are, 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 are already seeing plenty of value. Great, super interesting. Oren, what is your opinion? You meet with a lot of clients, you see that, you know, off the shelf. So what, what do you think is, you know, your approach? And what do you think is, is it ready? It's not ready? Companies are willing to adopt it? Yeah, so I think we're getting there. I think we're definitely getting there. You know, like you stand in line, you see people behind you, there's a big line of people already there, but we're still in the process, right? I think it's not in perfection yet. Um, and if I kind of go on with this uh, definition of having single blocks automated, whether science or ML ops versus the entire chain. So look at companies like RetentionX. Uh, they're a business insight company providing uh, insights into e-commerce sites like Shopify and so on. They use SageMaker Autopilot for automating their training and evaluations. It takes care of most of the science and ML ops like God mentioned before. So for them, it was a lot about time to market and being able to provide a solution for a lot of customers, a lot of shops very fast. But then we have companies like 3M or Deloitte using SageMaker Data Wrangler for the data preparation phase, right? Where it's kind of a low, no code sort of solution that can save you a lot of the uh, ML ops side of things and, and some of the more common ETLs as well, but still requires some manual work. 
Um, and then if we move up the, the, what we call the ML stack into what we define as AI services, those fully uh, automated solution for specific use case, what we find interesting that it goes beyond just saying, let's use the right tool for the right job or the right skill level. It's also about the right context. And I want to mention a company that many of you guys are probably familiar, Bluevine. It's an Israeli startup, I think Unicorn by now, that um, wanted to get into the um, funding that the U.S. government was provided for COVID. It was $953 billion. And they used Amazon TextTrack to get uh, document automation process. And they have plenty of data scientists to build stuff on their own. So the context here was let's save a lot of the burden of the back office of the ML ops and get something up and running fast. But another context can be um, the domain, the customized for domain specific uh, terminology like Octopus Energy, which is a UK electricity supplier that's uh, focusing on sustainable energy. They use Amazon Transcribe or voice to text to train in speech recognition models that have their own custom vocabulary for their own data or Coursera, probably a lot of you are familiar with the online education that use Amazon Personalize to adapt the learning of, a, of students in real time and then scale them very fast. So the context was about how can we test something quickly and scale it very quickly. Um, another example is Qantas, um, the Australian uh, airline, you know, the frequent flyer program that wants to integrate fraud detection with their own rule engine. So they used Amazon fraud detector that can do exactly that. So it's automating the entire process of uh, fraud detection model, but being able to integrate it with the rule engine. Or uh, last example would be the CBS um, news that use uh, uh, Amazon recognition custom labels in their content moderation, but they want to refine the moderation by customizing their own model. So this integration of auto ML end to end with a custom version of it is something that we're seeing uh, growing in actually helping the adoption even further. Israel, so basically you said that each company can use it for a specific need. It doesn't have to be the entire problem as Mayer and God said, just to try to solve a specific problem, even using things that I've already done or if they want to move very fast. Um, interesting, very interesting to see. And now let's take us to the third question. Okay, we, we get it. Uh, auto ML is great and many companies use it, but what are the barriers? So why? Because I've heard many people say, you know, automobile is great, it's fantastic, but you have to have a supercomputer in order to use that. Or the data has to be super clean and super organized, otherwise it will be a mess. So I'll be happy to hear from your side, what are the barriers? And moreover, some kind of like behind the scenes, thing that you saw as part of your job with clients or something that you have developed for your own, what made it more difficult to, to development to, for development when you want to use AutoML techniques? So I'll be happy to hear your thought about the barriers, the thing that doesn't really always work. So feel free to share. God, let's start with you again. Uh, a privilege. Uh, so I think uh, I, can, I can maybe share through an example. So the first time that we tried internally AutoML was I think two and a half years ago. Um, it was a product that was cloud-based. I don't wanna give like a cloud commercial or anything. So you, it's a basic uh, idea. You, you, you throw your CSV at the, at the service. It does all the uh, feature extraction for you. Again, the, the, the naive feature extraction for you. And then it produces a regression model and, and hosts it on, on the cloud. And um, the results came out amazing. Um, and the person that was operating um, or developing the machine learning engineer did not have a good understanding of how to evaluate models. And, and it was very, very obvious that the model was overfitting. And that is something that machine learning, uh, AutoML uh, would never tell you, right? Um, AutoML services will never tell you if you're solving the right problem, if you're leaking the, uh, if they can suspect, they can like give you a hint that you may be doing that, but they will never know if you really start solving the real problem. And this is something that companies still uh, need help with. Um, which problem are they solving? So the discovery is really is really hard. So for companies, so sometimes you have services like. Um, 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 it was comprehend or or uh, personalized, where you have 
Uh, I beg your pardon. I'm, I'm still uh, recovering from COVID. Sorry. Uh, so you are. Uh, so you have a service that can give you recommendations on on products based on your database, but you need somebody with intuition to machine learning that can discover the, the existence of the service and then try to connect in the head what would be the architecture of the system and how, how to build the, the entire data set to train and what information needs to go in. So again, the, the major hurdle in my opinion is the lack of human expertise. Um, and as, even though we, we lower the bar of entering machine learning every time, whatever, whenever service come, comes out, and it solves some of the technical problems and it solves some of the infrastructure problems and it solves some of the uh, even scientific problems, there is still a very, very uh, big need for people to understand what problem they're solving, um, how to analyze the results, how to interpret the results. And in my opinion, that is the most, uh, uh, the, the biggest hurdle. Um, of course, custom customability of the services if you don't find the correct uh, the, the correct loss uh, function that you need or the correct metric that you need, you're trying to do information retrieval and there is no mean average precision, then maybe the service, you will end up not using the service. Uh, but that is being solved very, like day to day. You, you, you see these problems getting solved. So I don't think that this is the ma major problem. Interesting. So you said, you know, AutoML can take you to a specific place but you still need to understand what you are doing <laughs> so you cannot just forget the the data scientist or the researchers because it can automate thing but you need to understand if you know it reminds me like a translation when you use google translate you should don't really understand the same from a hebrew to english or any other language you don't really understand the language you won't be able to see any kind of glitch or mistranslation so i guess this is the same problem here it can automate the thing you wish but you still need to be aware of what it's going to do. So it's very interesting approach, and it's also meaning that data scientists are here to stay. So this is also a very good <laughs> conclusion. Mayor, what do you think about that? Yeah, so, so, so for one, I'm gonna say, we're actively working on the challenge God said of helping the user set up the right problem. Either you, did you define the problem which meets your business needs? Is the data suitable for the problem? Etc. This is an area of active development. As in, what I'm saying to God is, I hear you. We're on it. Uh, but as to the original question of challenges, I think a missing feature is not really a significant barrier. AutoML doesn't do everything yet. Uh, the the big barriers are has to do with the different types of users. So, for the simple users, the, the analyst type. AutoML consumers, so it doesn't do enough yet, so it can't necessarily allow them to do the full promise. Sometimes it manages, sometimes it, it still allows them to fall into various pitfalls, like God mentioned. For the more advanced users, for the people who are currently doing uh, ML the hard way, so a lot of them are skeptical. So uh, a lot of them say, okay, it's uh, it can't possibly do. What I do is hard uh, and uh, don't want to accept what's actually available. So you go and you run uh, insights and you see, you see often an SME. So you go and you throw it at the tool at the, and it will give you a bunch of insights. And they'll say, well, I knew this one. I knew this one. I knew this one. I don't know this one. That can't be right. And it takes forever to convince them because it's presented in a less fashion way. So everything is either uh, things they knew or things they don't trust in the insights or features. Uh, other times uh, you have uh, users. We had, a, we had a client, one of the largest financial corporations in the world. And they have a huge team of data scientists and they were experts feature engineering. And their data was primarily time series, uh, numerical stuff, and they engineered a whole bunch of stuff. And even though they had a whole team working on this for a while, on this problem, they missed a dead simple feature from a textual column. It wasn't 
you didn't need to take the column itself. I can't tell you what it is because it's fraud and it will help the fraudsters. Uh, but a dead simple transformation was missed because humans, well, they miss stuff. So uh, you see uh, often the, the simple transformations, uh, people tend to not appreciate them enough. The, the completeness, the fact that it covered everything, it covered a, a vast space. So people underappreciate the simplicity of the transformations. They go and they say on this problem, oh, all you did is uh, this basic transformation on the data. You detrended, you tokenized, you removed this, you, you did various simple transformations and people don't appreciate them thinking, oh, sure, I, I can do that, except that you can do most of them and you'll miss some. And the auto mail doesn't miss. So people tend to miss that and that's another barrier. And I think uh, a big deal is really understanding and trusting the system. The auto ML systems are complicated. It's hard to follow what they do and to trust it and to understand it. So it's really a lot about trust, especially if you're producing a black box model and explainability and trust in AI is a big issue. And AutoML, uh, some of the solutions exasperate that problem. Interesting. So you say also trust is a barrier, not only data or compute power, but also trust. So this is a very interesting approach. Oren, what do you think about that? Yeah, so I completely concur with uh, uh, both uh, speakers. Trust is an issue. I have three things basically are the blockers or, or inhibitors here. Trust is definitely one. Education, uh, I think God mentioned that earlier on, and context. But we, we started with trust, so let me start with that. Um, trust has many levels to it. This trust of the data scientist in using the model, but also trust of the user in trusting a product that has AI embedded in it. And think about the doctor that needs to trust a tool that does automatic something in the process, right? And, and there's lives at stake. Or the regulator for financial services, they need to trust that um, um, the financial institution, FinTech Bank, uh, uses the proper regulatory guidelines or rules to approve or disapprove a loan. Um, so I think for that aspect, we're seeing tools that help, um, I say resolve the issue of trust. So one of them, for example, is the AWS Augmented AI, which adds a human in the loop in the post inference phase, right? So NHS, the National Health Service in the UK, they use Amazon Text Tract to um, analyze documents from healthcare, but then augmenting that with the augmented AI tool, diverting certain documents, certain interpretation, whether the model confidence is low or whether there's a key value pair in there that they want to tell me it's COVID. So for first days, COVID, everything, regardless of confidence of the model needs to be uh, read by a human. And that is for the purpose of gaining user trust at the end of the day or T-Mobile that's using uh, machine learning to feed care agents in real time with information about uh, the person that they're speaking to. And again, they're using uh, augmented AI to make sure that randomly sampling um, data to make sure that they have the proper trust of the customer representative in using the system. Um, another element that helps with the trust is the explainable AI naturally. And, and we have a um, company called Zopa out of UK, which is a peer-to-peer -peer lender using um, SageMaker Clarify, which is an explainable AI across the entire process here, being able to provide bias detection and, and drifting and so on, both in the model monitor phase, but also in the data preparation and the training phase. Um, so in financial services is very often, so we have Varo in the US, which is a digital bank that uses Clarify for transparency and their explainability commitment for regulators. We also have the autopilot that uh, we mentioned earlier on that has um, capabilities of an open ML. So Mobile Walla, which is a, a consumer intelligence for mobile marketing, they're using uh, autopilot for demographic mapping in improving their relationship, but also being able to then get the notebooks and dive deeper on their own. So this kind of opens the door to the next phase. And when we talk about context as a solution, so uh, context as, an, as a blocker, we all can relate to the non-coder analyst that doesn't need to understand what is a RIMA profit, DPR, in order to develop a forecasting time series model. But what about the experienced data scientist that has yet to trust auto ML, autopilot, but just because they think they have, or they have, I think they have the skill to do everything on their own, but do they really need to do everything? For example, do they need to do distributed training 
or can they automate this ML ops piece within their entire process and trust some elements? Or can they use model monitor, SageMaker model monitor to provide some baseline and then drift metrics on some of their data in ongoing phase? And then I'll just conclude with the last comment on the education piece. We're seeing a growing trend towards what we call on the job training. Companies that wanna have um, someone, whether it's Friendly Bliss or one of our partners, God, Mayor and others that work with their teams to not only build it for them, but actually build it with them. So they have the internal capabilities to do it on their own. And we're seeing a growing interest from product managers that want to understand the ecosystem of machine learning. So they know how to embed the model into a product. Having a model, even a perfect model, and even if we define the problem properly, doesn't mean that we can just take it as is into a product. And that's an interesting topic that we're seeing more and more traction around. Thank you for that. Um, I would like to now get a question from the chat that it was very, very interesting. I saw that some of you answered and it's created a lot of uh, discussions. This is very interesting. I will be happy to get your uh, approach. We have like 15 minutes, so everyone should speak uh, uh, several minutes. Uh, the question is like this from Noam Mori. Uh, should a new company try to start with AutoML straight away or first build some models and only later use AutoML to optimize the existing ones? So this is very interesting. We said AutoML is fantastic, great. Right? We have many solutions. Should we just start? from scratch with that, or should we first understand what models, maybe to create a benchmark for the AutoML? I'll we'll be very happy to hear your thought about that. Gad, what do you think? So I think it relates to a trick that I do sometimes to my customers. Don't tell anybody. I hope it's not recorded. Oh, it's recorded. Uh, I often, when I try to, because I, I am a deep believer of AutoML, and when I try to push them a little bit to AutoML, I tell them, start with AutoML. If it does well, then you can decide if you want to move to another model. And often when you do software development, the first solution that you started is the one that's going to end up in production. So if you're starting with AutoML, don't get surprised if by the end of the day, this is the model that you will end up deploying to production. Um, the, to the question, if you should start with AutoML um, uh, as the first phase, um, it's a, it's, a, it's a difficult question. Um, it really depends on the problem. Sometimes AutoML doesn't have the exact solution. So sometimes no, there, there, there is no point in using AutoML because you know that by the end of the day, it's not going to end up in production. It's not going to help you. It's not going to give you a, a meaningful benchmark. Um, but if you can read from the docs and read the documentation of the, of the product and see that in the end of the day, the product will give you most of, of your, will, will check most of your requirements uh, to the final product. Then I would say, yes, start with AutoML, thinking in your head that, knowing in your head that you might end up uh, using this product as your final product and not only as your first. Um, so I know that a lot of companies start with, let's start with AutoML as a benchmark. And then later on, if we will need, we will, develop a more sophisticated model. Some do that afterwards. But from my experience, uh, if you started with AutoML, you'll find it so comfortable that you will not see the need to, to go and handcraft models afterwards. OK, thank you for this input. Say it depends on the product you're trying to solve and the thing that you want to just use AutoML for. Mayor, what do you think about that? Yeah. I'm you so use a lot of AutoML sometimes to yes, companies I, so that the first approach is for you. So what is your approach for that? I, I think definitely uh, starting with AutoML, it's simply so much faster to get something Hello. with an automated tool that, that not throwing your data, not spending a day to, to get something and get an, an idea. It, it's simply stupid. It's simply when you have two options, and you're considering, and one of them, you'll get the first feedback in a month, and one of them, you'll get the first feedback in a day. Not doing the day option before the month, you need to have like some extraordinary reason. Uh, and, and this is the order of magnitude. Obviously, there are different projects. Sometimes just extracting the data can take weeks, but, but uh, so different projects. But this is, this is the time scale. It's so much faster. Now, it's not to say you don't need to fit the right tool for the job. 
if you're interested in insights, if you're working in a regulated space, then doing a network architecture search and gain a fancy uh, neural network architecture, which may give you accurate results, but nobody will ever understand, you're, you're, you're solving the wrong problem. So you need to understand what you're looking for. If you're looking for only accuracy, accuracy and speed, insights, understandability, explainability, you need to understand what you're looking for and pick a tool which at least, which at least claims to give you what you're looking for, give an automated approach a chance, then you can either improve on it because in the automated tools, in the good ones, it's not what you get after one day isn't the end of story. You can still tune it. And this is part of a paradigm shift. Somebody call it shepherd, somebody that. You're not telling the machine what to do. You're guiding the search. So, so if you don't get state-of-the-art results in day one, you can still continue with an automated approach. And you can move on, or you can ensemble. But, but starting with automated, it's simply so much cheaper than the alternative than not starting there seems very strange to me. Okay, thank you very much. So, so it's, again, it depends on what you're trying to solve, but, but I really like the fact that you said it. You first understand to, you first need to understand what is your problem and then choose if automated is the right approach for you. Uh, Oren, what, what do you think? I'm sure that you see both companies that start and doesn't start with that. So what is your approach for that? Yeah, so um, a couple of years ago, I was uh, actually on a panel uh, for startups talking about the lean methodology and so on, and was asked, how does machine learning even fit with the lean approach? Right? I mean, it sounds like uh, you want to get started, fail fast, and all those nice uh, uh, buzzwords. And, and machine learning is all about collecting a lot of data. It takes a lot of time to train and so on and so forth. And I think AutoML, at least the full AutoML, the one that covers all the blocks, is kind of takes care of that because that lets you get started with the POC in, in a matter of hours, days, weeks. It's a very long process even. So for sure, if there is an AutoML tool that can uh, address your use case, I would definitely start with that. I would probably double click into the documentation of the process to see if it's customizable or not, just so you know, if the result is not good and most likely, you know, all ML projects start with a bad result to begin with, right? So can you then customize it to your own data? Can you tweak it or is it a, um, a black box? It is an open box. Can you then go on and take the notebooks and continue on your own? So that's one aspect I would look at. But let's say you cannot find any solution or the solution for auto ML, the full auto ML doesn't work for you uh, well enough. That doesn't mean that ML is not a good solution here. It doesn't mean that you should shy away or not even use auto ML because as if you recall, the definition of auto ML could be that you automate just elements of the process. And then you go and say, okay, let's now focus on what is my core and what is undifferentiating for me as a company? Is feature engineering my core? Great, then I'll do that fully manually. But then I can automate the rest of it from training to validation to deployment to monitoring and so on. But maybe for me, the core is actually in, in the monitoring phase, right? In the, in the inference phase and, and optimizing the real time of that. And I can automate the um, um, data preparation piece of it. So thinking through that and what, which elements can you automate? will save you a lot of time and you can leverage a lot of the heavy lifting that, that companies like AWS have done it, exactly for that. It doesn't mean all or nothing. And I think that's kind of the, the bottom line here. If you can find something that does it all, great, use that. But if you can't, still don't go to the full end, other end of the spectrum and saying, hey, I'll manually do everything. That doesn't make sense either. So you say you should start with baby steps with auto -mail. Just choose the thing that you think will work the best for you and start with that. Do not try to do the entire ML workflow using AutoML. Um, actually, I, I'm, I think uh, this is the right approach. I think it's something that you can try. And as mentioned before, you can get a, a glimpse of the model relatively fast. So you can understand if it's working for you, if it's not working for you. And moreover, I think that using the AutoML will teach you things about the regular ML process. Because if things are not working in the AutoML, I saw it once in the project that I did, you can learn a lot from just developing the regular ML model. So this is something that could also help you out. And I want to move to the last question. We have like eight minutes, so each one will get two or three minutes. And this is something that's more general. 
Uh, how do you feel about automobile polls that appeal to the general public or analysts or people that are not technical or not uh, machine learning experts? Uh, like they are like the weeks of the model uh, training. Uh, could be the, the future of the ML model uh, development or you think that this is, will change the adoption of ML solutions? Because we saw that Wix has managed to give access to many people, SMBs, uh, to their own website. What do you think about those tools? Do you think that it will help more companies, even non-tech companies, to use uh, ML or, or in general? I think it will be not accurate, so it will uh, hurt it. So what do you think about that? Some tools that are really straightforward, like plug and play, and you can have your own model? God? Um, so I think that even when you're using a website creating app, uh, whether it would be Wix or another product, um, you still have to have a professional to tell you if you're doing a good job or not. So if you're taking the beautician that builds, you know, the, the, classical, uh, the classical example of like the beautician that builds their own website or the hairdresser that builds their own website, and they have no idea in web, uh, in web development, then yes, they're capable of coming up with a website, but then they need a lot of help in order to understand what they're doing right or what they're doing wrong. Should they apply SEO? Should they, um, how do they me measure like the, the quality of the design? Is there is, is there is good user experience in, that, in, in their website? So I think that yes, it will enable more people to use machine learning services uh, people could, companies, people could build uh, products like recommended product from a, from a store uh, and help build online stores very quickly using service, like amazing services that uh, now are uh, available to the public. Uh, but then in order to interpret the results, in order to understand if you were doing a good job, that would still need a lot of professionals uh, to come help you and say, uh, well, you are using the model correctly or you are not using the model correctly because you're not interpreting the, the results correctly or you have, or you need to enrich some of your data. So it will make, um, it will make machine learning more accessible. Uh, if I think about it, like um, there's an example that I like to give that um, if it was 70 years ago, you had to be Alan Turing to develop code. And now everybody can, you know, build a website without even knowing how to program a single line of code. So it will help us get to the point where more people are capable of doing machine learning, but still uh, you will need professionals in order to validate, in order to create good products. Okay, I totally agree. You know, even as you said, when you build a website, you need to understand what you're doing. There is a conversion rate, then benchmark and SEO, as you mentioned. But I think the same methodology is for also ML models. It's okay that you have the models, but this is much more than the, just the accuracy or things like that. May, what do you think about that? I, I think different users, we need, to sell, we need to sell them a different product. If, if your goal, a lot of people are focusing on accurate predictions in production and the end result is a, an endpoint, a Docker serving the model. You can't sell that to an analyst. Even if you've did it perfectly, in the end, you still need all the integration. Somebody needs to act upon it, etc. You might be able to sell it to an engineer and not a data scientist. So that's an option, but you still need to understand various things. Are you doing the right problem? Various actionability, causal inference issues, observational data, which are not yet solved automatically. We're working on it. Uh, and for the analyst, which people are often targeting, you, uh, you, should be, you're you should be selling something else. You should be selling insights. The analyst usually works with a BI tool and creates some charts. And, and the auto ML equivalent of, of obsoleting the analyst or, or, or superpowering him and making him a 10X analyst would be to tell him what he needs to ask. And he can verify these insights himself because he could have made them themselves. He can, he can, you get it, you, you give him the tool, you give him the thing, you, he throws in a few tables and he tells them, if you connect them this way, then we get this very interesting phenomena. So, so this is what, this is what AutoML for analysts should be. It's not about machine learning models, not about predictive, it's not about actions. 
It's about if the job of the analyst is to make pretty graphs and find in, insights in the data, then AutoML for analysts should be automating this task. And the analyst, as God said previously, is perfectly capable of evaluating whether or not you found an interesting insight and the graph is pretty and can verify and validate. So for each persona, you need to sell a rather different AutoML tool, which solves a different problem. Okay, actually it makes sense. I think this will be relevant for data science, won't be re relevant for product manager, data analyst, data scientist, and each one of them will have their own solution. Oren, what do you think about that? I know that AWS uh, are going to plan to launch many AutoML tools or integrate more AutoML aspects to the current APIs and solutions. So what do you think about this? Is this something that you see that might be a, a, a large part of your offering or what do you see the trends among uh, clients? Yeah, so yeah, first of all, I think uh, I'm just recommending I cannot talk to the uh, planned roadmap, especially that we're you know 100 days away from reinvent. But uh, I do we'll urge wait you all. Patiently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I do urge this audience specifically, without saying anything concrete, to to sign up to the reinvent. It starts I think November 29 in hybrid mode, and it's free online. So I think there will be a lot of stuff that's interesting for this audience to hear. Uh, but there was last year was some interesting stuff that was released, and and I think that's where we're heading. I call it sassifying ML. So those BI and other uh, users, they don't need to be edu all of them don't need to be educated on ML and how to interpret what to do with it. It needs to be embedded ML under the hood. So we've done it with QuickSight. Our BI tool, for example, has ML insights under it. So Expedia is using it for anomaly detection. Um, Tata Consulting is using it for forecasting. Rackspace is using uh, a Redshift ML for SQL commands. So kind of making this seamless for the uh, uh, end users. And, and like Mayor said, there are different personas and so on. Uh, another partner of ours that's been using this as example is SciSense that's been offering. It's the same autopilot that we talked about before. It's just under the hood. So a company called Skull Candy, which is their customer, offering uh, selling headphones and audio devices online. So they're identifying insights in their data using autopilot under the hood. So it's kind of a seamless solution of sassifying uh, ML. I think that's uh, at least one of the direction will grow towards what we call kind of the more um, uh, layman or, or non-data scientists. And then we're going to see more and more services and features around the citizen data scientists, making it easier to, to join. Uh, we're constantly having new features added to the AutoML and like you mentioned, all the AI services are pre-trained. So I, I expect this trend to continue. I don't see anything right now. Uh, if anything, it's just going to grow even more. Interesting. So we'll stay tuned to the reInvent and we'll see what are you planning to show us. Um, so I think we just finished on time. This is fantastic. Thank you all for joining us. Yeah.